All right. Um, we're going to start with a word of prayer. And uh, Pastor Gary Johnson is here tonight. I appreciate him being here. Come on up, little Gary. And he's going to open us in a word of prayer. He's pastor of Calvary Baptist Church here. And a good friend. And he's going to pray. And then uh, we'll continue on. You want me as we pray? Father, we're thankful uh, for a country where we can meet and discuss uh, our thoughts and our ideas, uh, our dreams. Uh, Father, we just thank you for everyone who's here tonight. And thank you for the friendship. Frank, thank you for the discussion, the, uh, discussion uh, that's led uh, to, to this point in the evening. Father, we just ask that, uh, that your hand would continue to, to be on this meeting tonight. Help us to learn uh, from these uh, candidates the positions that they have and, and uh, help us to, uh, to go home and to, to really um, take, take all this to heart and uh, figure out uh, you know, the best way to go. We love our town, we love our state, and we just thank you for, for a free country. Especially when we think about uh, parts of the world right now that uh, things aren't going very well. We're more, even more thankful for the United States of America. Amen. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Gary. Last two years of our lives have been like no other in our lifetime. We have had some dramatic things happen, and uh, we, they're not over. In the last two years, we've had all kinds of of things being hidden, things covered up, this outright deception, information not shared that previously had been open and shared, a time like we've never experienced before in our country, and it tells us that there's some reasons, there's some things going on. We need to be aware of that. We need to be investigating. We need to be thinking. That's a part of the reason why we're having this meeting tonight. Talk about and share some things with you. I'm going to share some things with you that I have observed and learned and um, that maybe hopefully will benefit to you. And you can go out and share with others. And uh, share with others. And I'm excited to have these candidates here. And both of them are, are new in each of their races, even though uh, Senator Beckham was our senator over in the other district in McVeigh County. He's now going to be here in Hope. And so both of these guys are new. You can meet them, hear from them, share them with others. And um, I'll just tell you that in talking to people about the two tonight, there were a lot of other conflicts that came up. And even people just had individual things planned already. And they said, well, I wish I could be there tonight. And they were excited to learn about Charles Beckham and Doc Washburn. And I'll just tell you guys, there are a lot of people I ran into that really are interested in you guys. And this is going to go from here. It's going to grow from here. And we can share the word. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, my kids come on up. And they're going to share a song with you tonight. Uh, they go real long what we're talking about. Because there is a battle for truth. And information. And facts. And we're going to share something with you tonight. And uh, this song really uh, communicates.
You need to read these. You need to know these. These are your freedoms. These are your protections. Look at number one. Top that page there. All political power is inherited, inherent in the people, and government is instituted for their protection, security, and benefit. Did you catch that? What's government instituted for? For their protection. Who's the people's protection, security, and benefit? That's the purpose of government. It's to secure the rights of the people. Does it say the government is instituted for the protection of a big corporations' protection and security and benefit? No. Does it say it's for the protection of Walmart and Tyson's uh, profits and, and security and benefit? No. But last spring, our legislature and our governor, governor worked, worked urgently to protect the interests of Walmart and Tyson over the interest of the people of Arkansas. And that's part of why we're here tonight. And we have these uh, candidates here. Section two, all men are created equally free and independent and have certain inherent and inalienable rights. That means they come from God. Amongst which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty and of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation. And of pursuing their own happiness. And that's a, those are great statements. And these three basic uh, liberties that, that come out of our, uh, that are there in our U.S. Constitution: life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And notice how our Constitution, I believe, elaborates that third one, expands on it: of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation. I believe that goes along with pursuing happiness. A few months back, we bought. Uh, home, our first property we bought in many, many years. We own it. It's best you can own something today with all the property taxes and everything. But it, we bought that property. You know what it did? It made us happy. We were happy on that day. We had some property. It was our property. And this is a right we had. That is a basic right from God. He made the earth. And he said, you can go out and you can live on it. And you can work that ground. And you can develop it. And, it's, and you can be your part. Your home. That's from God. That's a wonderful privilege. And what happened back last year was, I believe, that right was attacked when folks were told you have to take a shot or you can't work anymore. You can't earn a living. Because let me ask the question how can you acquire, possess, and maintain property without a job? You can't. And so they were striking at that, the ability for them to do that. Now, right here, I want to pause, and I want to ask if you lost a job in the last year because you would not take the vaccine, would you stay in? All right, look around. This has affected real people. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. This is happening in Arkansas. It is, it is um, affecting Automatically, people's lives. If you uh, were are under threat of being pressured to take the vaccine, or you might lose your job in the future, would you stand? All right. And if you have been trying to be forced to do something in any way, any kind of mandate, you were forced to do it, and you did not want to, in order to have your job or do something with work or something, would you stand? All right. Let's give them a hand, too. Ms. Martin? Does that include the board to wear a mask? Yes. <laughs> All right, there's, a, there's another one. There's another one. Uh, I can stand, too. Yeah. Mandates. And I want to share about that tonight. That's a part of our, our theme here tonight, because this is, I believe, one of the most serious threats we have to our way of life today. And it's going to get more. We're going to talk about some of that. It's not over. There are incrementally. When this stuff started, I thought, they're either going to push it all at one time or they're going to go incrementally. I wonder which. And maybe when they started encountering resistance, they, should, they started doing it incrementally, and that's where we're at. And there are future plans. And here's the thing in Arkansas. 
I, when I talked to people this week, they said, well, we don't have effects in many parks, do we? I thought, you know, that got shut down with the Supreme Court. I said, well, the, the federal thing from, from Biden, and, but, they, but it was that companies over 100 employees were to then do it to their, were to mandated to make their employees be vaccinated. Do you see what Biden tried to do there? He tried to use, but he didn't really do it directly, except the federal employees. What he really chose to do, which was much more vast around the nation, was he's going to use businesses as his strong man, as his tool and hammer to come down on the American people. He didn't do it directly. He tried to use business to do it. And the Supreme Court shut it down. In our state, that's exactly what has happened and what has happened. The governor got up and said, oh, no, we're not going to mandate the, the vaccine. Eventually he said that. He said, because we meant freedoms. That was before he said, well, we can't mandate it unless it gets FDA approved. I heard him say that. And I said, okay, so you're waiting when it gets FDA approved? You're going to mandate it? That's what Governor Hutchinson said. But now he came out and said, no, we're, we, we're not going to do, government can't do this. We have freedoms. But businesses can because they're private businesses. And the legislature debated this and said, oh, no, they're private businesses, so we can't de de deal with that. And that argument has swayed a lot of people in our state. And here's what I want to address about that. Whether it is from government or from business, a mandate is wrong either way. Amen. It violates yeah. people's freedom either way. It, it doesn't matter who it comes from. It's what it does that's the issue. Think about this scenario. You have a, a, a man where there's a uh, the homeowner and there's thefts all in the neighborhood. His wife says, honey, have you, have you, uh, did you lock the door? And he said, yes, I locked the front door. It's all locked up tight. We're okay, let's go to sleep. And yet, at the same time, he left the back door wide open. Is that man's house protected? Can he wake up in the morning and the thief comes and says, well, I locked the front door, so that's all I needed to do, and I was safe. It came in the back door. And what we've done in Arkansas, and what it really is being done, even, like I say, by Biden federally, this is the plan, is they're saying, well, no, we're not going to have government mandates. We're going to lock the front door, but we're going to leave the back door business wide open. And whether they come in the front door or the back door, it doesn't matter. If they come in, the thief has come in and robbed our freedoms. And it's unacceptable. And we need to think through this in Arkansas to say that uh, it is wrong for a business to mandate a medical treatment. Um, let's, let's go on here. And I want to point out, if you look at the next page, the very last freedom, number 29, is, is wonderfully stated. Uh, this enumeration of rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Others retained by the people. What is that? I think that, that that's medical freedom. That's in the list. We have a basic freedom of, of uh, deciding our own medical treatment. And to guard against any encroachments on the rights here retained or any transgression of any of the higher powers here delegated, we declare that everything in this article is accepted out of the general powers of the government and shall forever remain inviolate. And that all laws contrary thereto or to the other provisions here contained shall be void. Now, that's a lot of words. It basically said anything in these 29 articles supersedes every other law a state legislature may pass in the future. And if they pass a law that violates one of those 29, it's void. It's null and void automatically by the Constitution. That's great. We need to use that. Because when they passed other laws and did stuff, the mandates, it really was null and void. <laughs> well, but there is some, a specific uh, thing in our law. Look over at the last page on the very back. Arkansas Code 26103. Look there, A1, large A. Here's the statement of this law. It code, uh, codified in uh, 2017 uh, or 19. I get confused on I think it was 2019. Yeah, I believe it was 2019. An adult, married minor, or emancipated minor may make health care decisions for himself or herself and give an individual instruction. That's state law. That says you can make your own health care decisions, your own medical decisions, whether you get a shot, 
whether you take an aspirin or whatever. That's your decision alone, and it's law that says you have that right. No one can tell you what to do. That's why when you go into a hospital, that medical profession has gone to school for how many years cannot force you to do anything. They can only tell you and then say, what do you want to do? And you can say, no, I'm not going to do anything you say. Turn around and walk right out. And they can't do a thing to stop you. They can't penalize you. They can't do anything because of that law right there. It's, it, we've operated by this. Hospitals are bound by this. And it's powerful. They go by this. Let me ask you a question. Is it any logic at all to say a hospital medical doctor professional cannot make you take a shot, but Walmart executive can? That makes no sense at all, does it? But that's what we've done in the state of Arkansas. And in the legislature, Charles Beckham was there. Charles Beckham stood for us. He, he voted against. He voted for the, 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 uh, the legislation that came up that was good, but it didn't have enough votes, and they failed, and they only passed a very weak one. Charles is there. Maybe he'll share some details with us about that. But our legislature failed us last October because they sided with Walmart and Tyson and their profits instead of the rights of the people and even this law, this state law, to say everyone can make their own health care decisions. And that means they can't be penalized. That means they can't they say, well, we're going to fire you then. But that's where we're at. The law is on our side, what I want to share with you. And businesses can't do this. You say, well, they're private businesses. They can do whatever they want. No, there is a limit. And you know this. What, are, what is business limited by? The law. The laws. They can't make, they can't tell an employee, you got to work uh, 24 hours a day here at the uh, factory and seven days a week if you want to keep your job. They can't do that. Why? Because of work laws. They're limited. Freedom is limited by laws for businesses and for all of us. All of our freedom is limited by law. I can just go out and do whatever I want to do. I'm limited by law. And then the Constitution. Businesses are the same. They're limited. Walmart and Tyson are limited by the laws of the state of Arkansas. And we, the governor and the legislature, did not stand up for that. The majority. I said Charles did. Others did. There weren't enough of it. And nobody took it to court. No, and that's the other thing. You that's take it to court. That's the top level push, and then yeah. take unless challenged in the court of law. And yes. it costs too much money to challenge. And when you take it to court, you get there, the courts are so liberal and squishy, they may rule against what is plain law. What is plain law. And this, I'll just throw this out here. There is a movement on of making a medical freedom amendment in Arkansas. And we need to get on a, a, a support of this. There is a sign-up sheet on the back. They're, they're, they have to collect like 100,000 signatures, I believe it is. Is that right, Doc? 100,000 signatures in three months? Yes. What the um, uh, lady who's doing this, Tanya Charlton, she said you have to have 10% the amount of people that voted in the last two right elections. and it was like 900,000 yeah 891,000 so yeah, she said we need to care on the safe side yeah okay right because they're going to throw, they're throw some out some that are illegible yeah. or right or whatever so right you really need to get about 100,000 and that's underway there is a shot on the bag there's been they're signed up all around the state the thing that that will do is a um, force of amendment will be a lot stronger in a court of law yeah. than a state law right It'll be much more harder for that court to overlook that. But even then, we have that, that battle. Okay, if I could hold questions, because I'm not going to get through my statements right now. And we're going to have a question and answer time at the end, unless it's just you real pressing. You have to sign that petition in that county. Yes, home. thank you. Thank you, Brother Martin. You have to sign uh, by your county, and, all, and that's the only page you can sign on. So we will direct you on that at the back if you want to sign that tonight. You must sign only on the page of your county, or it will not be counted. And uh, Carl, Carl's in the back. He is uh, involved in taking signatures. He can answer questions for you. He brought the forms tonight. So uh, we'll direct you that way at the end. You can sign that. And we can get that. What it does, that gets in on the ballot in November for us to vote on it. And that would be a wonderful thing for us to do, is to get a medical freedom amendment that has that force. Uh, we great. All right. Um, let me just say a few things about the legis 
legislature in October and where we're at. Where our law stands right now is, Charles, you can correct me if I get off on any of this, but um, that they allowed vaccine mandates. They allow business, they say you can require a vaccine mandate as a term of employment at your work. But there are two uh, exception type, very weak, weak exceptions. It says, or you can test weekly and get a negative test. You should not have, that is not freedom to be subjected to a, an invasive medical test once a week in order to work somewhere. And then look at the wording, it was you have to test negative. So that begs the question, you get a positive test, that means you have not fulfilled that exemption, so you're back to having to take the vaccine or you're out if you test positive. I believe that's how the wording is on that bill. There is no protection, very little protection for uh, the workers there. And the other exception is, or you can do get a immunity test uh, once every six months. But again, you should not have to prove some test in order to work somewhere. What COVID has done, one of the craziness is it's made getting sick a crime. To where you can't work somewhere. You can't go here. Even they are, do you realize they have set up internment camps in the state of Washington? They're building them. And the legislature was considering legislation. I don't I haven't heard where it where it went to. They were they were gonna do they were doing legislation to say if you uh, test positive for COVID, you've got to be interned into this camp for 14 days, detained for 14 days. You're arrested because you got sick. They are making COVID a crime. And we better nip that in the bud because that will be a hammer they will use against all citizens, and especially, I believe, Christians. I believe that's where it's headed. And they are in this seriously. We need to get in this seriously. We need to get in seriously stand up for our rights and the law and delay this to push it back as much as we can in our state. This will be played out state by state. That's why Florida is doing so good, because they have Ron DeSantis there in the legislature standing up for their people. And what they did was they, they did... I don't agree with what most states did. Is they said, yeah, well, you can do business, you can do a mandate business, but you've got to allow exceptions. They did some good exceptions. They said you you must recognize religious exemption, you must recognize a medical exemption, and, and that's pretty much everybody, you know. And they allowed that. And then the Santa said, if you violate this, we're going to fine you five thousand dollars a day. And it had teeth in its words. Other states have done other exemptions. Tennessee went a little further and said it can be any reason you want as an exception. Montana is the best. They said vaccine mandates are not legal here in Montana. You can't do it, business. That's the only state in the union. I looked at a graph. Only one state was labeled as saying no vaccine mandates in all 50 states of the union. What are we doing? Hopefully Arkansas can get on that map before long. Amen. These things are unconstitutional. If we lose the right to make our own medical decisions, we have lost a lot of ground. We, we're, we are open to all kinds of control and abuse. Now, I want to go there just to, to, um, for you to understand where this is headed. It really is about a lot of control. Even many of them that are involved in the global agenda are saying it. And here's what will happen. If they mandate vaccines and they're headed toward uh, say you have to have a passport to enter in different venues. If they start mandating vaccines for work, for shopping, this is what will have to happen. The largest surveillance tracking system will be unveiled in our lives that we've ever seen. They'll have to. They'll have to verify you have the vaccine. And they'll do that digitally. And that will involve a digital search of your body which violates your Fourth Amendment right, that you're, you're securing your body, your person, your belongings of unreasonable searches or seizures unless there's a warrant, and that warrant is specified crimes you have done. But we're about to enter into a surveillance state, and it's already happening. Canada and other cities in our country, they're already in, 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 in implementing a surveillance state and searching you on a digital basis, violating that right, totally running over. And if this continues on, that is where we're headed. A huge surveillance state that then controls you. I can tell you where you can go, where you can't go. And, and I read an article here just last week. It said this, uh, oh, the digital apps are being rolled out 
right now. They're called Health Smart Passes. You need to look for that name. They're apps, and they are being marketed to a lot of the center states, the red states. It's being marketed to Arkansas. It's being considered right now. They have the technology set up in order. And why would they set up technology up and not use it? They're going to, they want to use it, and they're waiting for the next wave or the next crisis down the road that they will, will, will go to the hysterical about, and they will then move to the next stage of, you must have a vaccine passport to go to this concert here, come into this town hall meeting, to go to work, to go here, go there. It'll get more and more and more until it's a total surveillance state. And here's what the article said. It said that digital pass, that digital pass and app, is with just a couple of little uh, tweaks is exactly the system that communist China has in it of the, the uh, and the name escapes me right now, but the social, the social credit, social credit system. It says it's exactly the same. That is getting set up here in America under a different name, folks. That's where we're at. Wonderful. And it's an app. And that's what we have to look out for. And, uh, that's where things are, are going. Let me get back to my notes and get back up here. What can we do in the future? Well, we need to let some legislators who, who know what this Constitution says right here, who says that the government is instituted, is instituted to secure the rights of the people. And they will stand up for our rights in the subsequent uh, sessions that are coming up. We gotta elect those. And one of them is here tonight, Charles Bethel. We need to elect him. He got a challenger coming up in this that's really been put into the race by his ex, the one he uh, defeated last time, the Democrat in Magnolia. It's just put up this guy to try to get him back out, who's totally a, a moderate liberal vote. We need to get behind him. We need to get him elected as our state senator and get him back to, to Little Rock. And we need others along with him who will recognize that we've got to protect the rights. And then we need a governor in the governor's office who will then execute those laws. Uh, I skipped over this. Let me, let me uh, look at this real quick. On the second page, third page, over, um, no, fourth, fourth page. Num it'll be number 10 slash 43 at the bottom. Section 7 right in the middle of the page at the last line is really kind of tucked away there. Here's the duty of the governor. And he shall see that the laws are faithfully executed. That's the job description of the governor. And we need a legislature who will make good laws, protect the rights of the people, and then we need a governor who will execute those. And Doc Washburn is committed to being that kind of governor. Amen. And that's why I'm behind that. A governor who respects the rights of the people. He says this, law, this, this state should not be controlled by the rights. <coughs> it's not made for the profit. This state is not here for the profits of this corporation. It's for the rights of the people. That's why government has been instituted a moment for our protection. And we've lost sight of that. We've lost that knowledge. We've lost that truth. But it's still there on paper. But the Constitution is not a self-enforcing document. We must stand up for it. We must stand up for our rights and stand defend them and press them. Or we will lose them. If we don't stand up for our rights, we will lose them. That's the reality. And that's the burden of my heart. For my kids. For my grandkids. For our way of life. And so we need to be a part of this election. The primary, these races will be decided on May the 24th, about two months from now. We must go to those primary elections. That's when these things will be decided. That's when we'll elect our governor. That's when we'll elect our, our legislators. May 24th, we've got to not forget that. We've got to get the uh, word out to everyone else to get to the primary elections, whereas a lot of people will set those out. So we can deal with these things. And then we need to be educated and be informed about all the things that are coming down the pike. All the things they're doing to implement these things. And be ready to speak against them, to stand against them, and to defend them by the laws of our state that we know. That's what we need to do. And that's part of the reason we met. That is the reason we met tonight. And I hope this has helped you to have some uh, information and knowledge and, and things you can get in and look into. And you can then be a voice in the days ahead. God help us.